All right, so a couple things that we're going to discuss here are first, Fisher projections, and then how to use Fisher projections to determine R or S configuration of a molecule. So, first, Fisher projections. Well, let us take, for example, this molecule. So we can see that it is tetrahedral in shape. We have a methyl group up here, an ethyl group down here, a bromine, and a hydrogen. If we were to draw this out just in a, a normal notation, it would look like this. Okay. Now the only thing I haven't drawn in here that is here is this hydrogen that is also attached to the carbon. You can see that the carbon is attached to two other carbons and a bromine, and the hydrogens aren't drawn in, but it's there. So now what we do is we arrange this molecule in such a way that is called a Fisher projection. A Fisher projection is just a two-dimensional way of drawing a three-dimensional molecule, and this is going to help us to manipulate it better. So the way a Fisher projection looks, you just draw an X, or like a cross rather, and the vertical line is going to represent going into the page, and the horizontal line is going to represent coming out of the page. So just for like ease right now, I'm going to draw, you know, these triangles which also mean out of the page, just so you remember that the horizontal means coming out of the page. A way that I like to remember this is like if this was a person with its arms outstretched to give you a hug, the arms would be coming towards you. So therefore the horizontal line is like the arms that are coming towards you, therefore out of the page. And then just remember that then therefore the vertical line is going into the page. Okay, so how to draw this? This vertical line represents the carbon chain, and this cross represents the carbon that has, that is a chiral center. How do we determine if a carbon is a chiral center? The way we determine that is simply by looking at the four things that it's connected to and making sure that it's connected to four different things. If any two of the substituents attached to that carbon are the same, then it would not be a chiral center. Like for example, if we had a carbon with like a, a bromine and a CH3 and a hydrogen and a hydrogen, because this is attached to two hydrogens, this is not a chiral center even though three of those are different. Since two of them at least are the same, not a chiral center. If we take a look at this molecule, we see that this carbon, for example, is attached to three hydrogens and then this whole uh, you know, collection of things right here. So, but since three hydrogens are the same, not chiral center. Same thing applies for this carbon. If we look at this carbon, we can see it's attached to a carbon or a CH3, a carbon with a bromine and all of this. So those two are different things, but it's also attached to two hydrogens, which are not drawn in. So since two of those substituents are not the same, this is also not a chiral carbon. This one, however, is attached to a CH2CH3, it is attached to a CH3, it is attached to a bromine, and it is attached to a hydrogen that is not drawn in, so therefore this is a chiral center. That's usually represented by a star drawn onto the carbon. And that is the same carbon that is right there, and the same carbon that is going to be represented by the center there. So. How do we draw this now? Let us pretend that we are looking at this molecule from this direction. So the hydrogen and the bromine are coming out towards us. And also the reason why we have it this way is because we want the carbon chain to be on the vertical. So if, we ha if we're looking at it from this direction, the hydrogen would be here, the bromine would be here, CH3, CH2, CH3. 
Now the way we pri now we need to prioritize these groups, and the way we prioritize them is by their mass. So hydrogen is going to be the least pri have the least priority, so that one's going to be number four. Bromine is going to have the highest priority, so that's going to be number one. CH3 and then CH2, CH3. Since this is attached to just one carbon, it's going to be number three. And since this one is attached to two carbons and five hydrogens, this is going to be number two. So in order of priority, if we're comparing this one versus this one, this one's going to take the higher priority. The major reason for that is if we look at what it's connected to, we see that this is a carbon connected to a carbon that is then connected to a hydrogen. Up here, we just have a carbon connected to a hydrogen. So if we're trying to compete in order of priority, the first thing that is attached to is a carbon. So that technically is a tie. But then we look at the second thing that is connected to. Up here, it's connected to a hydrogen, and down here, it's connected to another carbon. So therefore, this one is going to take the higher priority. So this is going to be number two, and this is going to be number three. So now, this right here is what we call the Fischer projection. This is the Fischer projection. Okay, so how do we now find R or S configuration from this Fischer projection? So Ideally, what we would like to do is orient the molecule in such a way that the side with the lowest priority is pointing towards the back. And then we just read either counterclockwise or clockwise the remaining three substituents that are attached. Now, that's kind of hard to visualize just on your paper, so there's a trick to doing it. What we're going to do is we're going to take the hydrogen and we're going to put it in the center. And let's imagine this like in the very back and then imagine as if we're looking down this way. So if the hydrogen happens to be on the horizontal, then you have a flip. Just remember that. If it's horizontal, you flip it. If it's on the vertical, you do not. So the lowest priority happens in this case that it is on the horizontal. So what do we do? The CH3 is on top. The CH2, CH3 is on the bottom. And now this bromine appears on the left side, but since it is on the horizontal, there is a flip, so we draw it here. Priority one, priority three, priority two. So now we just draw a circle in order of priority. One to two to three. This is clockwise, therefore R. If it was counterclockwise, it would be S. So now, let us take the enantiomer of this molecule. Now, just by convention, we know that if it is the enantiomer of this molecule, and this one is R, the other one must be S. But let's just see to make sure so that you can see how the mirror image of this really will give us the S configuration. So I'm going to draw the vertical and the horizontal, the chiral center. So again, we want the mirror image. So the top will remain the same. The bottom will remain the same. This has the hydrogen on the right. So over here, we're putting it on the left. And this has the bromine on the left. So here, we're putting it on the right. And as you can see, these two are mirror images of each other. If I was to move this one up here, you can see it is a mirror image. So we already figured out the priority, so I'm just going to write in the numbers again. Hydrogen was number four, bromine was number one, the methyl group was number three, and the ethyl group was number two. So again, to draw this, we're going to force the hydrogen into the back, and because it is on the horizontal, and the horizontal represents out, we are again going to do a flip of the bromine. So. The methyl remains the same, the ethyl remains the same, 
and then the bromine would normally be drawn on this side, but since the hydrogen is on the horizontal, we flip it and draw the bromine here. Again, for the priorities, this was three, this was one, this was two. Start at one, go to two, to three. We see that this is counterclockwise and therefore S. So, like I said, just by knowing that one molecule is an enantiomer of another one, and if we know that one is R, we know that the other one must be S. But just you can see that if we really do have the mirror image and we were to do the same procedure, we really do in fact get an S configuration instead of R. The only thing to note from this is let's just say for example, we had a Fisher projection. And again, I just want to show you what it would be like if the lowest priority was on the vertical. So let's just say, for example, that we have a um, Fisher projection that's something like this. And the hydrogen is here, and we have a bromine and a CH3 and a CH2, CH3. So just to show you what would happen if the hydrogen was on the vertical. Again, let's assign the priorities. Hydrogen will be last. Bromine will be first. The ethyl group will be second. And the methyl will be third. So like I mentioned previously, on the other one, when the hydrogen was on the horizontal line, we did a flip. In this case, it's already on the vertical, meaning it's already pointing towards the back. So we will not flip. So, force a hydrogen to the back, but it was already there, so no flipping. CH3 on top, bromine over here, CH2, CH3 over here, one, three, two, and this is clockwise, so therefore this would be R, and just going to draw the mirror image again for you. CH, just to show you that it will in fact be S. CH3, hydrogen, bromine's over here, so we'll put it here. This one here. Carol Center. One, three, four, two. Okay, so again, the hydrogen is already in the back, pointing back because it's on the vertical. So we're just going to draw the CH3, CH2, CH3, and the bromine. Priority 1, priority 3, priority 2, and 1, 2, 3 counterclockwise, so therefore S. And that's it. So like I said, the major thing to remember when drawing a Fisher projection and determining R and S configuration is that if the lowest priority is on the horizontal, you do a flip. Horizontal, we did a flip like this. And if the lowest priority is already on the vertical, there is no flipping involved, and that's it. That's how you find R and S configuration from the Fisher projections.